Hi Scorpio and welcome to your horoscope for October 2024. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm in the UK so please note that my horoscopes are based on UK time and please watch them in this order. Rising sign first, then sun sign and finally the moon sign. So I'm going to break the month of October down into four weeks and I'm going to pay particular attention to what the moon is doing, how it travels through your charts and where it supports you, what areas of your life it supports you and on what days. Okay, so week one, Tuesday the 1st until Sunday the 6th of October. On the 1st, we have the moon in Virgo, and that's in your 11th house of hopes and dreams, and um, connections to what could be, right? So on the 1st of October, if something kind of flashes before your eyes, this wonderful thing that could happen, really pay attention to it, jot it down, because that's something that's likely to show up in your life experience. It's something you can manifest. On the 2nd of October, we have a... New Moon in Libra, and that's also a solar eclipse. I've made a separate video on that, so I went into a lot of detail. If you want more information on it, please have a look. But in your case, it's a New Moon eclipse in Libra in your 12th house of spirituality, and it's there on the 2nd and 3rd of October. And Libra is a bridge, and for this to happen in your 12th house really connects you to your higher self. So if you've never had a spiritual awakening or a breakthrough, or you felt like you've got some message for source, even though you've asked several times, this eclipse is something that's really going to inspire you in terms of what you can do in your everyday life to heal certain things that don't work for you and to replace them with something completely different. So if you have a spiritual practice, meditation, chanting, whatever, swimming, going out of nature, um, yo-yo playing, I don't know, it could be anything that gets you in the zone. Please do that around the second and third. You'll get really useful concrete guidance that when you implement that, your daily life could look very, very different as a result. On the 4th, 5th, and 6th of October, we've got the moon going into Scorpio, and it goes into your sign in your first house of self. Venus is also in Scorpio in your first house. So this the 4th, 5th, and 6th is great for you, Scorpio, in the sense that you're going to feel like things are going your way. You feel like you're yourself. But any of the things that have to do with creativity, healing, using your intuition are going to be heightened and if you work as an artist or as a psychic or as a as a reiki healer then please use the fourth and fifth and sixth to either the, do your best work or to record your work or to keep some record of it because it's going to go very very nicely on those days so in the first week the moon touches houses 11 12 and 1 so 11th is hopes and dreams, 12th is spirituality, and the first house is you. So it's really about you being given something here in the, in the first week by something bigger and invisible that says, hey, wouldn't it be nice if this could happen? Or first of all, this is something that could happen in your life. And you then integrating that and feeling more hope for the future and saying, hey, listen, if I work towards this, it can actually happen. So I think the first week feels you leaving very informed and very empowered and optimistic about the future. Week two, Monday to Sunday, 7th to 13th of October. We start this week on the 7th and 8th with the moon being in Sagittarius. And for you, Scorpio, it's likely that you get some good news in work that um, have the potential for you to earn more income. And it's likely to come from an organization, your, your employer, a company, a corporation, who are very pleased with your work, who've seen that you've done well and now recognize that and either promote you or give you a pay rise or you get a windfall um, on the 7th or 8th and it makes you feel like my career is moving forward and it's going in the right direction. So please let me know in the comments what your experience with that is. Um, then the moon moves into Capricorn on the 9th and 10th of October. And that goes into your third house of communication, and it's next to Pluto in Capricorn. So you may start to look at certain things that um, you want to unlearn, certain things that you've given kind of mental space to, and that you've taken as truthful. And you may realize that some of those things weren't truthful, and you're able to let go and replace them with better beliefs. So that's interesting, because that if you have negative self-talk, you can become aware of that and let it go. Or if you've been told something by another person 
and you've always kind of stuck to that and believed it, something may happen where it turns out that that was actually inaccurate and not true. So if that happens, it's something being exposed, really then believe the expo and don't do mental kind of gymnastics around it. Also, on the 9th of October, we've got Jupiter, the lucky planet, that retrogrades until the 4th of February, 2025. The outer planets spend about six months in retrograde. And when it is retrograde, the energy is kind of expressed within you. When it's direct, it's out there, right? And in your chart, Jupiter is in retrograde in Gemini, 21 degrees, in your eighth house of institutions. So that's really great because it means that when it comes to any of the governing bodies in your life, you know, the taxes and your landlord and, and um, employers and probate and all these official things, you'll be able to deal with those better here in October, but you'll be able to deal with them more effectively over the next six months. So if it's a case of, oh, you know, I haven't been that interested in these things and I've just skim read or um, it intimidates me and I have to hand it over to someone who knows. If you pay attention to it, like if you engage with those things yourself, you'll notice that you get intuitive hits as to this is right. So anything in that realm, you know, mediation, contracts, um, on an official level like that, the next six months are going to be much easier for you. Then we have the moon going into Aquarius on the 11th and 12th of October. And that is in your fourth house of family. Okay, so the moon is the heart, right? It's what makes you feel at ease. And the fourth house, which is the, the cusp of the fourth house, is the IC, which is your roots. Is This is where I feel I belong. It's a really good idea for you to spend time on the 11th and 12th of October with family members or people who are like family, people you feel really close to, because it's likely that through discussion, you'll have a new idea that really allows you to kind of free yourself even more and to have a greater sense of optimism moving forward. On the 10th of October, the moon is in its second quarter, so it's waxing to becoming a full moon. And that was then in Capricorn in your third house. So ideas about how to let go are going to be particularly strong around the 10th of October. On the 11th, Pluto, the planet of transformation and change, that goes direct. Pluto in Capricorn at the moment is really important. I made a video on this at the beginning of the year in January because Pluto went into Aquarius in January and it's going to stay there pretty much for 20 years right the only time now it retrogrades back into Capricorn is now from September till the 19th of November and I think Pluto and Capricorn isn't such a good fit because it's about unraveling things and Pluto and Aquarius is better because it's about the rebirth of ideas so with this being now in your third house it's good to let go of faulty beliefs or negative thinking or things that you've accepted as right when they aren't and really flushing them and letting go of them. So it then goes forward into Aquarius on the 19th of November. So Scorpio, you've got an opportunity here to do some mental kind of spring cleaning. On the 13th, we've got the moon going into Pisces. And that goes into your fifth house of love and romance. So this is the best day so far for you guys, Scorpio to enjoy those things, love and intimacy and listening to music and doing something with, with a partner. So if you have any time um, around the 13th or even the 14th and 15th, the beginning of the next week, because the moon stays in Pisces for those three days. And the fifth house is really what you love to do work-wise, but it's romantic partners, it's children. It's really the happy moments in life. So those three days are fabulous for you to experience real closeness and to recharge and to relax. And on the 13th of October, we've got Mercury, the communication planet, ingressing into Scorpio, your sign, and going out of the 12th house of spirituality in Libra. So with Mercury going into Scorpio in your first, and Venus is there as well, from the 14th of October onwards, you can really trust your gut, you know. Your intuition is going to be massively heightened. You're letting go of negative beliefs in the past that may have 
manipulated or influenced you and now you're able to connect genuinely on an emotional level so the rest of the month could be like high romance for you if you're in a relationship or if you're single you could meet someone and really meet the person that you you've been looking for okay so in the second week the houses the moon covers is the second third fourth and fifth and that is really the bottom of your chart, right? At the very center is the I see your roots. So the second week is all about how do I create more structure in my life, both what I do in work, but also through my relationships and my family. What makes me feel like I'm home? People and having my life purpose as far as my profession is concerned. So Scorpio, you can have a really... Uh, a, a month here or the first two weeks are really a revelation in terms of you're getting this guidance and it shows you what really matters in life or doesn't week three monday to sunday 14th to 20th of october on the 14th and 15th the moon is still in pisces in your fifth but now it's in between saturn and neptune so again working creatively having some sort of spiritual breakthrough where you're able to acquire a faith because you feel something for the very first time all of that's very possible so if you're someone on a spiritual quest or mission really use the 13th 14th and 15th of october to really like meditate or to spend a little bit of time on that then the 16th and 17th of October, we've got the moon going into Aries and it goes into your success or work. And really, these are the best days of the month for you to take charge of um, everything that needs doing, get loads of errands done, but also to find a way to have more control in your work and to get things completed in a pace that's much faster than usual. And on the 17th, we have a full moon in Aries. So the full moon is when the moon is fully lit up and it celebrates the completion of its 28 day cycle and let's go. So you can channel all that Aries energy into your working life, particularly when it comes to the structures of your working life. So if you want to change your hours or if you want to be transported to a different office or you want to go self-employed, you really have the oomph to kind of say, yes, I'm doing this now. Also on the 17th, we have Merc uh, Venus ingressing into Sagittarius. And that goes into your second house now. So Venus and Scorpio really put you in touch with your own feelings and allowed you to make a, a fresh start based on those. But now in Sagittarius, the adventure is, hey, I want to do really well in work and I want to I wanna create some material abundance and prosperity. So from the 18th of October, I think your work and your, particularly the pay is going to be very important. So, so look out for things that you're getting in terms of how can I create more freedom? Could I do this by myself for more profit? All of those things, if you consider them and then implement them, you could look a lot, uh, you could have a much better plan in place by the end of October than what you had at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so then we've got... The moon going into Taurus on the 18th and 19th. And again, this is beautiful for um, relationships and intimacy. And also thinking of doing something nice for your partner in a, if you are in a relationship, that's like a thing. Like planning a picnic or um, flowers or just um, giving them a gift that they kind of, you know, they saw in when you were like window shopping one day and they really liked it. Actually just surprising someone with that. You're emotionally very connected and physical is also the physical connection is also likely to be great. So um, the 18th and 19th, if you're in a romantic relationship, like take this these two days to spend as much time as you can. I think you'll have a delightful, marvelous time. Um, then on the 20th, we've got the moon going into Gemini and that joins Jupiter in your eighth house of institutions. So the moon in Gemini really it again makes it very easy for you to deal with officialdom and red tape and if you tackle that contracts mediations lawsuits um tax discussions devote yourself to that and you'll be able to come to a better than expected um, resolution by applying your own kind of understanding of that the houses that the moon covers in week three are the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. So now we're at the right-hand side of your chart, and it's very about, very much about what am I looking for? What haven't I got in my life yet? 
in terms of love, in terms of my daily routine. Why is that the way it is? Why can't I have a better one? And also the connections I have with public groups and organizations and people I collab with and employers. So this is really very much about outward and bringing what you love to do with the right fit and putting them together. So in week three, I really think you can kind of tailor your own life to suit you much more. Week four, Monday to Wednesday, 21st to 31st of October. So this is the, the last week is 10 days, right? Um, on the 21st, we have the moon in Gemini still okay and that's uh, um, next to jupiter in your eighth the next day it goes into cancer the 22nd and the 23rd and that's then in your ninth house of education and travel and connection to the higher realms and i think that you are frustrated with um there's potential that if you have a trip planned or something that is delayed or if you were going to start a course that that might be delayed or something that makes you a little oh this is inconvenient so around the um 22nd, 23rd, just give yourself a little bit of extra time and don't expect everything to go 100% smoothly. It may be a bit of a delay or a letdown. On the 22nd, the sun goes into Scorpio and it does that obviously in your um, first house. So happy birthday, Scorpio. But now it's next to your transiting Midheaven and Mercury. So not only do you have this vision for how do I create more income for yourself, you really start to know in your gut what the options are for work that would be more suited to you and what you like. So any Scorpios who aren't particularly thrilled with their current employment or self-employment, you're able to either adapt it and tweak it so that it does work, or you're able to move into something else. Or you get the un idea of this is what I could move into and it would be great. Let me actually go do it. <laughs> okay. On the 24th, the moon is in its fourth quarter and it's waning towards the new moon that it becomes on the 1st of November. And the moon here is in your 10th house in Leo. And that's really amazing because I think you'll understand and notice here what hasn't been fair in your work and where you've been overlooked or where you've not been treated fairly and whether you want to accept that or not or whether you want to make a change. But again, you can trust your gut on that. On the 26th, 27th and 28th, the moon moves into Virgo and that goes into your 11th house of hopes and dreams. And that's wonderful because those three days you're going to feel like uh, I've made it. I've got all the uncertainty out of my life. I've found a better way to live. I feel grounded. I feel like I'm on top of things and the future looks much brighter because I have more specific knowledge and ideas and information. And I know I can move towards that more in an independent way. So Scorpio, you, you really get your act together here in October. Not that it was out of order, but you become so focused and laser sharp focus here. End of the month, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st of October, the moon is in Libra, and it's in your 12th house of spirituality and spiritual strength. So that's interesting because Halloween, you know, it said back in the day that the veil between the real world and the other side and the dead was like thinner. But in your case, with the moon being in your 12th, if you want to get some answer from your higher self, or if you want to have that spiritual connection or sense that connection, please do it around the 29th, 23rd. 30th and 31st for you it's like the veil really is thin in the truest sense of the word and also you can enjoy this to well you can enjoy the rest of the month to have a greater sense of connection with 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 the invisible but then also do something to connect to other people and you'll have a fabulous end at the end of the month here so i hope well let's see what houses were um covered in the last week or the last 10 days so 21st so it was in um your eighth house and then it moved all the way to the 12th okay so the top of your chart and main very heavy on quadrant four so w what do i belong to what's kind of not worked for me what do i want to do in my work moving forward to realize my hopes and dreams that spirit has kind of delivered to me so it's about, yes, not just getting your act together. It's about getting very clear on this is where I'm going. No one else can do that for me. I'm happy with it. I'm certain about it. So I'm going to go do it. 
So it looks like a great month for you, Scorpio. I hope you have a fabulous time. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. And in my personal readings to draw up your charts, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, then order chart rectification with me, please. I work that out manually. Watch us, have a look at some of my other videos, please. The new moons, the full moons, the eclipses. And I also am here every day. I do a daily tarot reading. So if you want to be part of that, please become a member of the channel. It's not expensive. And um, there's a daily video for you to watch. I hope you have a wonderful October and I'll speak to you soon. All the best.